Chief Justice Dr. William Mutunga has launched the Judiciary Service Week seeking to clear the backlog of criminal cases before the court. Justice David Kinani Maraga was earlier today sworn in as the Chief Justice. In now, Chief Justice David Maraga is asking Kenyans to embrace alternative dispute resolution mechanism in order to reduce backlog of cases in the, the system. Kenyan courts. This backlog as at January this year so that more than half a million. Today, if you go to file a civil matter in court, in the formal court, there is a filing fees involved. The civil procedure is quite difficult to a lay person, so you'll need to get an advocate, an advocate. So you have to open a file with an advocate. You will have to pay that advocate, um, advocate's fee as per the Law Society of uh, Kenya remuneration order. You will uh, probably, uh, every other time he appears in court. So, a good scenario is whereby you're chasing 5,000 shillings, but you do the filing fee in court, you pay the advocate uh, 10,000 to open a file with him, you then pay him uh, 3,000 for every appearance. So you'll end up uh, spending, say, 50,000 shillings in the formal court, chasing 5,000 shillings. Okay, the court then you win, and they said, person X should pay you back your 5,000 shillings, but you've spent 50,000 shillings. Then, the due process. Uh, we also find that our court system with a high backlog of cases, before that court listens to that civil matter and determines that you've won and you should be paid back your 5,000 shillings, on average, our courts in the lower court takes uh, uh, three to five years to conclude a civil matter. If it is the high court, it takes between 2.5 years to three years. So waiting for five years uh, to have your case determined, then it is way too expensive uh, and also torturous to you. Now I'd like you to look at how law is taught in this country. That you are only a lawyer because you go to a law school. And you are only an advocate who practices in the court of Kenya because you go to Kenya School of Law. And what that means, it becomes a path of very few people. And you can guess that this country has just about 16,000 lawyers. We have 40 seven million Kenyans who want to rely on the services of 16,000 lawyers. Do your mathematics. I'm not so sure how many people one lawyer represents. Don't forget that out of the 16,000 lawyers, only 4,000 are ready to work in the criminal justice system. Many of them are company secretaries, they are lecturers, they have no time for the formal justice system. The question therefore means, how many Kenyans remain legally unrepresented? One of the biggest problems in this country is that uh, the mainstream formal justice system is a slender and therefore attends to very few people. And even with those few people, it is still clogged. You realize that 75, 75 to 90% of Kenyans use alternative systems that are closer to them in their homes, in their villages, in their clans. Well, the history of uh, alternative justice uh, system work in Kenya goes back to 2003 when uh, <coughs> Legal Resources Foundation, we started the project uh, in prison. Uh, by then it was called the Kenya Prisons Paralegal Project. And ideally we were having our paralegal model, um, having paralegals work in prisons, providing free legal aid and assistance, and also monitoring human rights violations. So, and ensuring rule of law. So one of the observations that paralegals who were working in the various prisons and children remand homes was that there was a high number of people who had committed crimes against the person and the system was not as fast as it's supposed to be. Before the advent of colonialism, each community in Kenya applied their systems of dispute resolutions differently. And, uh, and, the, 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 and then there was harmony. There was really nothing that would say, um, uh, would hinder them uh, applying their systems of uh, justice systems in solving their disputes. However, in 1885, a Berlin conference was held in was held in which Africa was partitioned, and Kenya 
became a British protectorate and colony, uh, among other states in Africa. They brought their law under what we call order in council, so and recognized the the admins the, the application of traditional dispute resolution mechanisms, not customary law. They were saying these ones would only apply to Africans. And they imported law, that's the common law, doctrines of equity, and other laws imported through the order in council would apply to the settlers. So you realize now by 1897, we now had um, a dual uh, legal system. Uh, there came in now the repugnancy clause. They were saying, yes, you can apply this a customary law, so long as they conform to justice and morality. Of course, it was in the, in the eyes of the British law and in the eyes of the British people. During independence now, the independence constitution recognized the application of customary law. However, the, there was a retention of the repugnance clause, this time saying yes, it should not be repugnant to justice, morality, to written law and the constitution. So that now we continue uh, with the repugnance clause to now control really the application of the customary law. And unfortunately also the African customary law was at the tail end in the hierarchy of the laws, sources of law. That was in 1963. So we continued with the dual legal system until 1967 when it was abolished by the amendment of the law and the introduction of the Magistrates Act. This time now we had a unitary uh, system of uh, law, legal system, so that now you would only apply a civil, I mean you would only apply traditional dispute resolution to selected civil cases and, and, and uh, the repugnancy clause also was retained by the Judicature Act. So we, we now continued with that operation until um, 2010. But all from the colonial time up to 2010, these systems despite the existence of the repugnancy clause continues to flourish. So in 2005, we did conduct a, a study which came up with a report called Balancing the Skills. And we realized that there is need to have alternative ways of uh, adjudicating matters and give birth to something we call the small claims courts. This we piloted it in Trukana uh, because by then uh, the environment was good uh, for that. We had supportive uh, uh, provincial administration then which is now Ngao, the chiefs were willing and were already doing uh, something similar where they would have elders and the chief sit and listen to small cases of civil nature. I owe you 5,000 shillings. I didn't return as agreed. Can we discuss? Why are you not paying? Can, I, can you pay me installments? And that gave birth to the whole conversation of looking at... Uh, how to dispense of, of cases out of the formal court, and basically the judiciary. You realize that 75%, 75 to 90% of Kenyans use alternative systems that are closer to them in their homes, in their villages, in their clans. And LRF has been doing this since 1999, all the way to 2020 as we speak. We have tried to work with communities in Karicho. We have worked with communities in Turukana. We have worked with communities in Isiolo. And I can tell you for free, alternative justice system works. It's faster, is more relationship building than the formal litigation process. Legal Resources Foundation has contributed in the policy development in a number of ways. One. Uh, the organization started a project in Kericho uh, after the post-election violence which then sought to utilize the community justice systems 
uh, to, you know, in peace building and bringing the communities together. The community there is a cosmopolitan sort of a community. So it was very important that there is a, a way of bringing them back together. Now what started then, a community justice system, was a way to help resolve the many disputes. Uh, one of the characteristics of that uh, community is there are so many kilometers away from the courts. And, and I know back then it used to cost them up to a thousand shillings one way to get to the Kericho law courts. So it was an, uh, you know, a, a sort of a community justice system uh, to deal with everyday issues. Now, in the course of time, when the judiciary started learning about, you know, um, coming up with the whole idea of alternative justice systems, so Kericho became a learning site for what we now have as autonomous justice system. Isiolo was a pilot project of AJS and uh, this was not by accident because Isiolo is a, is a county or the town itself has five, okay, more than five communities and uh, we have the Warana, we have the Somaris, we have Samburu, we have Trokana, we also have Meru, apart now from other tribes like the Kikuyus and uh, the other tribes from the country. But the big five, actually they call themselves the big five, <laughs> are the ones I've, I've mentioned. And uh, the history of this place has been very volatile. It is very important that uh, elders are involved in settling matters that are coming from the prison because uh, such matters are petty. Some of them, a large number of them are petty and uh, they are also related to family conflicts which can be settled through the use of elders. And uh, after realizing that, RRF started introducing the concept where elders can come to the prison uh, from April 2019, which is last year. And uh, through that, we developed, RRF developed a tool that is enabling prisoners to apply for their case to be to be referred by court to the elders for for them to be settled within the prison and this has been important because cases are being had and settled by the elders within the shortest time period of around 14 days which is in essence is trying to decode the criminal justice system and also trying to unify the family and bring out the question of the family members who have been in conflict. We've embraced AJS in our work because uh, apart from it being a, a dictate of the constitution and uh, Islamic law, the constitution encourages alternative justice and Islamic law also in, in, in encourages uh, Islamic justice, uh, alternative Islamic justice system. But uh, it is when the people, uh, it, it, is, it is easier, the people are more accessible. The elders are always accessible and they have an in-depth knowledge of the disputes when, they, when it comes to hearing. And uh, they, they can stay long hours, one sitting and they sort that, even if it's up to midnight. You know, like courts, we have a very limited time. <laughs> so, so when you are hearing a case, you know you have a backlog, you have the 20 cases to hear in a day. But elders, when they are sitting with these people, they understand them. So, uh, they give them enough time, they also dig into the background, you know, they are free, not like the courts where you only rely on witnesses. With them, they can even call for other relatives to know the background of the problem which is before them. So, they, even when they, they write their reports, we are normally very happy with it, because they will say this one was bringing problems, we talked to them, we gave them time, we told them go and discuss, come tomorrow. And by the third day, everybody is, <laughs> is satisfied. So their judgments are actually, I would say, the best which we can embrace. Sese kama waze, ukiwa mze, si mtu ambao nafa kwa na ile kwa kimabafu, ama pia kwa mtu wavitisho, lazima uwe mwenye nyekefu, na uwe mtu mishi wao. Si mze, unapofanya kezi, unakuwa mtumishi wao, unakuwa chini yao. Ili waweze 
ku, ku matiana na wewe lakini ukiwa jua hawawezi kukuba sasa kitu kile tunafanya tu huwa tunajenyekea kwao baadaye tunaweza kufaulu hiyo kesi ile mizozo ya jamii kwa jamii kabila lingine kwa kabila lingine e, bibi na bwana unajua e, jamii ikiwa na mzozo kama bibi na bwana inasaa baka watoto inaenda iki ikikuwa kubwa na jamii isipokuwa sawa ikiwa na mizozo location yote itakuwa na mizozo na division na Kenya yetu haitakalika kwa hivyo yeye yes inasaidia katika kumaliza in the first stage iwe mizozo inasuluhisha na kwa njia ya haraka justice inafanyika inapatikana kwa njia ya haraka sana haichukui muda kama kotini mimi ni msamburu si kuiga kusaliwa na ninajua ilikuwa ni nikitaka kusema kitu ninaenda kwa sile cases ya wasa na sikiza na kaa hiyo 300 meters kutoka mahali wamekaa na sikisa nikitaka kusema kitu na shika matawi ya green hiyo ni ishara ya kuwaomba wale wazee wanipe nafasi ya kusungumza na wanakubaliana na nini na nimefanya kutoka mwaka wa mbili na kumi yote kumi na moja, kumi na mbili, kumi na tatu saa hii ninasimama mbele yao bila kwasa wananikaribisha kwa dhati sana kwa sababu gani kwa sababu wamekuja kusema kuona kwamba ile maelekezi ninatoa ile ile m, 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 mikakati ninaweza toa kama kiongozi imewasaidia wengi sana na wamama sasa wameanzia kusongea. Wamama walikuwa wanaogopa. Wanaona kama ni laana kwa njia moja ama nyingine. Wanaona kama si vizuri. Haifurahishi wanaume. Lakini saa hii tunakaa pamoja, tunachanganyana na tunakaa pamoja. Hakuna shida kwa sababu huyu mama kwa mkutano ni yule mama tu anakupikia nyumbani, ni yule tu mke wako, ni yule mama ya watoto wako. Kwa hivyo si ati ni mtu mwingine tofauti amekuja kwa mkutano. Ah uh, it's very important to have AJS to handle uh, prisoners cases because number one, our our prison system is so congested and by so doing uh, involving the AJS team to work on those cases we are going to congest the prisons we are going to to to, to, to reduce the backlog backlog back 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 of cases in courts so for me i think that one is the best idea and it is actually the right time to to do it alternative dispute resolution imesaidia sana upande wa prison haswa wakati wa kufanya hizi makesi kidogo kidogo inasaidia upande wa reconciliation uwezi mfungo akimaliza kifungo yake wakati ya kwenda nyumbani aweze enda kuenda nyumbani ama kwenda kuingia raia na aja reconcile na mwenye alimkosea so it will help the prison upande ya reconciliation na itakuwa mzuri na itakuwa rahisi to the department for safe reintegration back to the society kuna tool ambayo imetengenezwa na LRF ambaye kama kuna cases kidogo kidogo mfungo ambaye anataka ku, ku, kuomba kotini hii kesi iende kwa wazee hiyo tool ndo anajaza ni form ambayo iko na jina yake iko na date na iko na case number na hapa naye imeandikwa ya kwamba reason for being referred to case anaomba hii kesi yake iende kwa council of elder so tukiandika hiyo barua so mkubwa naye ambaye ni officer in charge wetu ana forward anaandika forwarded then tunapeleka kotini then from there the court will will direct on what to do kama itakubaliana kama ni court itaona ni kesi ya kwenda kwa ADR itapeleka kwa ADR so tunapata form nyingine sasa ya kusema kwamba the above case was referred to to for ADR as requested um, what you find uh, the way they resolve the court they first matters to them they sit uh, hear the, the cases make a determination and the parties come to an agreement then they sign then a report from that uh, sitting is taken back to court so then the court adopts uh, the decision um, and then you know sort of that decision becomes a court decision prisoners already they have embraced the the ADR and they know that uh, already they have committed an offense against the community and they know the only way they can be accepted back to the community is through the elders and that is why they already they want their case to be referred to the elders so that the elders can start the their reconciliation work with the communities and also enable them to maybe have a, a communication uh, a conversation with the 
with the con the the complainant of their cases and they reconcile and then the matter is settled and they go back to the community together wakati nilikuwa jela hiyo wakati ningekaa kwa sababu kuna wengine walikuwa hapo na same issue ambapo wamekaa walikuwa wamekaa hata mwezi mmoja alikuwa amekaa mwezi 18 mwingine hasa ile alikuwa anipea kidogo aliniambia alikaa mwezi nane lakini ile familia hiyo mambo ya, ya wazee wasiki wataki mambo ya wazee wao wanataka kukompetitiwa wao kwa wao ndo yatiliwe sasa yeye ndo alini advise akaniambia yako usipojaribu channel ya paraligo utakaa hapa hivi vile mimi nimekaa na mimi nimekaa hapa mwezi 18 ali nadhani bado hata sahihi yako huko sasa wengi wameridhika kwa sababu wakati mwingine sasa watu waweze kuenda direct kuishi unachuna wengine wanatarao msewa kichichi wanaenda kwa ajili wengine direct sui wanaenda hata wale watu watachiri walikuwa naenda kwa wapi direct kotini eh suko wanaenda kutumia pesa kunyanyasa lakini faida sasa nimeona wale sasa kila mtu ako na haki yake wale wako wako na chini na wale wako juu ndio tunaweka usawa eh kwa kesi na tukiona kabisa ile tajiri tunaambia wasi ile mtu mtajiri anataka kunyanyasa mwingine tunaeleza wasi kama wasi ah uh, ijes katika area hii imetumika kwa njia iliyo sawa sana kuhakikisha haki imepatikana kwa community na zaidi ya yote kwanza ipatikane kwa elder ambao wamefundishwa na amejua haki zake so anapoenda kutoa haki kwa wengine ye mwenyewe ni beneficiary wa ile haki so area hii yote tumefundisha watu mambo mengi juu ya AJS tumefundisha program za tuseme mambo ya mashamba tumefundisha mambo ya jamii tumefundisha mambo ya success tumeshikilia mambo ya FGM tumefikiria mambo mengi so sitataja yote kwa jumla mambo ya katiba tumeitekeleza sana katika sehemu hii kila elder wa kila village ako na vitabu ambao tunaita documentation ambao kila eneo wazee wa kikana na wafanye kezi wana kitabu tunaita hardbook ambayo inakuwaga ni kurekod na baadaye ako na file na ina ina ina, ina, ina makaratasi ambao wataandikia na kufile so tunaweza ku access na kuona kazi ya kila elder na katika chief's office zote ni kazi yangu kuhakikisha na kuwatembelea katika vijiji kama wana upungufu kwa njia fulani ni kazi yangu kuwafundisha na kuupdate na mambo ambayo inaendelea kutokezea jamii ilikuwa na challenges nyingi wakati tuliasa lakini wakati walidasa kuleta makesi wakaona tunaweza kwa sababu ananikuta na kitabu kama hiki niko naye naandika serial na document kesi yake hapa naandika serial namba ya kesi yenye iko inaandika date inaandika age yake alafu penye ninamupea siku ya kutatua hiyo kesi akikuja tunatastua kabisa siku hizi hata wengi wanakuja hata kuliko kwenda kwa wase jamii wanafurahi kwa sababu wanaona ile mahitaji ilikuwa mingi hakuna kesi sisi kama e, e, wazee wa NDR tunafanya kesi siku moja hatutaenda muda mrefu miaka na miaka ama kisasi na kisasi bila kufanya succession itakuwa kasi rahisi hao wazee wanapotusaidia ili tunaenda through ndipoza kila mtu awe independent tunafanya kesi kwa shida nyingi kwa nini nasema tunafanya kesi kwa shida nyingi hatulipwi <laughs> hasa tunatumia gharama nyingi Eh, kwenda kufanya kezi the elders sometimes are usually elderly people and they may not even be in a situation where they are getting regular remuneration but yet they are committed to their work so can we look into ways in which we find um, ways of facilitating them at least the bare minimum uh, to to do their work we want to it to remain um, 
as as uh, free as possible for the beneficiaries because you're looking into first sorting out the conflict that is existing and then there are also those checks of um, you don't want somebody to say they are paying so a, a judgment or a decision to be made in their favor police lazewa wasewa watakuwa kenya mzima watakuwa na manufaa kwa sababu wote sasa wase watakuwa na nguvu ya kuongea na kupeana mawaidha hata kwa serikali kwa sababu imetambulika ya kwamba wase wako na uwezo ya kuongoza hata wasangi hata rais mwenyewe tunampatia mawaidha kwa sababu sisi wasi.